this next video here, we're showing you how to make easy, cheap bus bars for using multiple batteries in either series or parallel. Now, if you want to know what that is, I'm going to show you a picture. Here is a picture of series, what a battery will look like. All right, and now here is a picture of parallel. That is the difference in how we attach batteries to gain amperage. Here it is for parallel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I ended up with this result. And this here is nothing but type L soft copper. So you see this here bus bar. It was just simply tinned with a little bit of solder and you do that so that you don't get oxidation on it and we're going to have like here you'll see over here this is the bus bar similar an older model that I made so I could use on my large shunt to get it away from the battery and make easier contacts so this is about the same thing shrink tape on it and we're going to be introducing my little friend This I bought in about, I think, January. So this is what, September now, right? So this is about nine months. Nine months I've been using this. It comes with two batteries. There's the other one charging back up. And it comes with a whole nice, beautiful case, works great. And it has all kinds of different fittings. Now, generally, I don't want to get off subject too much because we're going to be doing these bars here. Uh, what we're showing you is shrink tape bus bars you basic your terminal makeup okay so lugs terminal makeup you see that that right there is a battery balancing line that i make this terminal makeup so this is like if you want to unsolder ic chips off of boards that's what this will do it's impressive there's a reason i got this it's because i was nearly 50 feet in the air and i dropped this torch up in the top of a wind turbine and we're doing the shrink taping the wires and this landed on the ground so take a look at that now i'm up a lift and this hit below me could you imagine boom <laughs> i've been that big fireball right so bad idea better idea and this one here look at this um you see that battery that big chip in that battery right there i dropped this one from like 30 feet onto concrete okay behind a, a, a t-mobile store <laughs> we're putting in solar and look at this it's been nicked it's got some hits on it but pretty good it's lasting and if that drops big deal if that drops big boom right we're going to get into this and show you how i put all these together and why we use certain type of a shrink tape identifiers when we make cables like this and how easy it is how cheap it is this piece of cable right here with the wire and the terminals literally cost me 270% more than this did. So if you got a lot of batteries like this out here, this is what you want to do. So let me go look at that right quick. And y'all make sure you look at the previous video where we show this beautiful, 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 nice solar setup for beginners. I want you guys to learn the easy way first and then move forward. We're going to do these cables with this, but let's look at the batteries. You'll see how that was made. All right, so out here, you have the same thing. You have the same thing. You have a positive and a negative side, and you identify those. It makes just servicing the battery so much simpler. But this is joining six-volt batteries right here, and the same thing. You see where we bridged uh, two full banks of batteries using just a copper, type L copper. It will handle about 400 amps. Okay, that's a lot. So if you're talking about a 230 amp hour battery, with this, you way exceeded your abilities. Even if you're talking about 300 amp hour lithium batteries, you're still way exceeding your abilities if you're setting these up in series or parallel for your uses, as you've seen in the previous pictures, series and parallel designs. All right, let's uh, get over here and we'll show you how to make these terminals. All right, now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do a designer shrink tape for these bus bars. Now, this doesn't just have to be bus bars. This can connect off your battery. Uh, it's where you can put in shunts and other things such as this, as I previously showed. That is an awesome way of doing this, and it gives you the high current. Now, this one here is a Type K copper. You see how thick that is? It is capable of over 700 amps. 
This here is about 400 amps and it does just fine, 365, 370, but you ain't got to worry, it's a very short run. So you can probably pull a peak of 450, you know, for a few minutes and then keep it under 350 for normal operation. But most batteries, they're not going to have that in them anyhow you're fine to use this. Now, the way that I set this up, and I'm gonna show you this little beautiful heat gun here, is I take this and I put the shrink tape on one side like so, and then I will go ahead and use the heat gun. I'll put it up here. And the heat gun, you wanna turn it on and give it probably, let's see which tip I wanna use here. Um, I use that one there. That's perfect for shrink tape. And they just press on. Now, don't grab these off of here when this, once it's been running because this is going to be really hot, okay? So it has a high and low heat setting. I'm going to run this on high, and I will push this button in and lock it. Right there with that lock button. That locks it in, and you'll be able to see that it gets hot very quick. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, look under the video. There will be links to this thing. And in my posting on community tab, I usually put all of these things up there also. So this one is now hot. You see how cherry red that sucker's getting? And we're going to bring it right over here. And we're going to set that shrink tape down. And let me get a better view here. Set that shrink tape down. And this is better than using a torch. A torch tends to burn the hell out of this stuff sometimes. And you don't want to go there if you don't have to. Look how handy. I can even leave it running because you want to maintain its heat. And then we will continue and run it down. Now you get about, I don't know, three eighths to a half inch away from your work and it works fine. You will not burn it. And then I'll put that one on there and go ahead and hit the button here and unlock it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the shorter piece I made for it. So as you'll notice, as you've seen in the battery bank, I have a black and red side. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's about dumb as hell. Well, when you're hooking up different switches or disconnects or fuses, you don't end up confused and burn your house down when you just go ahead and make them look nice, right? Ooh, very warm. And um, the smart move is to make sure you use positive negative identifiers on everything you got, not just a few items, okay? So we'll put that on there like that. And now you'll be able to see that We'll get that fired back up, okay? And let her get red. She gets red pretty quick, see that? Around seven, 800 degrees. And here's what's funny. Caught my wife the other day using this on the center of a pizza that didn't cook well in the oven. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, that works good. <laughs> so you see that? Nice, clean. And then what I do is I just make sure it's all nice and solid connection on there and I'll put links to this shrink tape but this is usually the best kind I get is Windy Nation branded uh, they're pretty good quality shrink tape doesn't tend to want to rip or slip and um, there you see that how it goes down nice and solid so you have a bus bar Oof, watch this hot hey. <laughs> you have a bus bar that's that's polarity identified Kind of cool, huh? Now, the difference between the two, both have the same carrying capabilities, except this one is they're about $1.50 a piece for these items, and the piece of wire is about another buck and a half. So if you look at that as a cost of about $4.50 to make each one of these, and that a foot of this copper literally is about, well, $4. Type L. So L is the soft copper, which is this and it is a thick walled copper now the standard rigid type m copper that you got in your house it's only good for 215 amps if you want to use that use it but i don't recommend it i recommend this because the density and the purity 99.995 percent pure copper that's what plumbing copper is supposed to be rated now refrigeration copper that's a different story refrigeration copper doesn't have to be anything over 96%, but this plumbing copper has to be 99.99 so uh, or higher. Now, you're wondering how did I make this offset so that if you're gonna put it on the battery terminal, you see how that works there, that little offset? Well, that's not too complicated and it works simply. Let me put this up here so you can see it. It works simply by taking the hammer 
and flattening this side and you'll see it naturally wants to compress it down like that and then to make it nice and perfect you're going to come off to the side here to the edge and you'll hammer the back side just like that you see that so you'll hammer the front now this uh this camera will fall so let me try to get something here set up and i'll make a better picture for you here where we will actually do it okay and hopefully that don't fall over either so okay so once again like i was showing you that we're going to take this end of the copper and don't worry if you're worried about how long you have to make your piece well you measure between your center points and you add a half inch twice so you add an inch long so if your center point between your two battery connectors is say four and seven eighths then you want a five and seven eighths long piece so that you have material on both ends there for making your uh your hookup as a terminal okay that's a very nice setup now over here with this copper, what I'll do is I'll just kind of guesstimate. This is a little bit left over, and I usually would cut this off and actually make my own terminals like this. But for the video's sake, it's a scrap piece, and we're going to just flatten it out where that's at. And then I'll show you the other special trick. So I'm going to hold it back here where I want it at. And you make sure that you're totally flat right there so that your opposed side is as flat as you can get it. You can work it out. Now you see that, how rough that looks? Okay, it's not exactly perfect, right? But I'm gonna hold it over here on the end of my, on the end of my vice's hammering spot here, my anvil space, and I'm going to now get it pretty done up there, and then I'll clean it up over here. Now, it is made to basically mimic this one you see that oh, hold them both there all right and what i will do to fix that little overage right there is i will simply take a pair of tin snips i'm going to just kind of generally mark that where i want it at which is about right there And just taking 10 snips, I will be able to cut it away. Not a great pair for that. I should have used standard aviation, but. And then you have yourself a bus bar. You see, not bad, not hard to do. And then as far as drilling it, you're going to drill it with like a 3 16 bit first, where you'll center up your hole for where you're going. And then take you a taper bit, like one of these taper bits, and you'll slowly clean it out. Now, what you got to do to do that is I'm going to put it over here in the vise for everybody because otherwise this copper is a soft material and it will just go spinning everywhere and then we're going to take this little warrior drill right quick and I'm going to chuck it just as a rough guess I'm going to drill my pilot this is a pilot hole and be sure you do not leave copper filings all over your floors because if you have pets or small children it will really eat their feet up. Pretty dull bit. All right, now I've chucked in that little taper bit, and this way you can go very slow. And get a very accurate hole size for whatever your battery's gonna be. Come around here to the back because there is what's called blowout. You see that right there? And we will just do a cleanup by just barely pressing on it like that. Now, we have created, let me drop it out here, a complete bus bar. And that was simple, wasn't it? So when you see that complete bus bar, we're hooking up your batteries. Now, in the case of the number eight screws here that go with the uh, lithium batteries, There you go. You see that? So it's lower on one side than the other. You see that? Lower on one side than the other. And easily manipulatable. You can actually move this. You can bend this. You can actually take this copper and fold it once and twist it the other direction. All kinds of things. Just be sure you cover it with some shrink tape or use a lacquer clear coat. Now, the same thing using these right here. Let me get this set up. 
All right, now this is a Timco, very good quality. A lot of these do not have these that are pressed together right, and they'll get loose, but the Timcos are very good. When you push this in, this is for your hammer, and it'll stop right there on your heel of your terminal. See that? It doesn't push in any further. The way that these work is they use a compression displacement seal or a compression displacement contact, and they work by literally causing everything to just smash into itself and fuse. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this big monster here, this big one here, has to have much heavier cables. That's why this was increased and this is increased so that we can hook up this inverter to the battery that's under there. Stay tuned. Another video coming. Be sure you're watching these and be sure you subscribe. And if you want to make sure the channel gets more things like this to do with, y'all donate at that buy me a coffee thing. But buy me a coffee, John Daniel at the bottom. It really helps. I mean, drastically. We're able to do this stuff because people want to know how I'm going to take my knowledge and share it. All right, so here we go with that. Now, typically, I'd have something like holding the other side of this, but we're going to just basically show you how it works. It's just a hammer, and you're going to hear the change in tune or tone that comes up when it's bedded out. In other words, there's no more displacement in that fitting for it to go to. You hear that? That's fully sealed. Now, once that's done, usually, <laughs> you give a little tap right there so it knocks it loose because it will get pretty well buried in that thing. And then you have oof, a terminal that is now fully crimped. Now, what I do to add strength, because you've seen these where they have just a single layer of shrink tape over them, the first thing they do is that splits away, right? Well, I put a short piece and then a longer piece over both of those. And then that, and we're going to, it'll be the same everything you do here. But I'm going to turn that heater gun on, let that warm up a little bit. And you'll see that the same thing, I, I pre-did this one. And if you get these, uh, these fittings, you'll put them in a vise and get you one of these taper these uh, taper bits because this fitting was drilled out to handle this bolt you see it was drilled out to handle that bolt and the other one for the other side over here you see that much larger bolt for the ground that's what we work with we make them with this you can use this it does a very perfect clean job and that way the overflash you can clean off real easily see that and it does a premium job just be sure you put it like that in a vise and don't over tighten and you can drill those out to where they can fit different things you're working with okay so that's how we're getting them all done here and we're going to have in the next video we're going to show that thing hooked up Whoop. and look at that 21 volt battery just sitting there running like a moron right well good thing about it is even this wooden table below it it's not likely going to cause hardly any damage. One, I'm too lazy to lift it up, but put it over here. But it's a super concentrated short distance heat. Let me get away. That blurred real bad. And you can see how it seals up. So when I get up on top of uh, on a ladder or a bucket lift, I have a big tele. I have a big telehandler I use for installing wind turbines. When I get up there, being up there with a torch like that. Man, that's just two, two levels of stupid that I've done for 20 years and I need to stop. Because man, when that thing bounced, it literally landed at the edge of a pile of bricks. Could you imagine? Could you imagine that would not? We wouldn't be doing this video unless it's from a wheelchair or a box, right? So this is a very handy unit. And the reason I got it was actually two unsolder to remove using this little one here. Um, like IC chips off of boards because that's what it's good for and perfect heat and you can switch it back and forth high to low um, The difference in high to low is only like 35% But it's enough to make all the difference when you're like pulling a pulling a microchip off of a board on something you're working on But everything else it is absolutely bulletproof. So boom. There we go and all that running Still three full batteries and I didn't start with a whole four because I've been working on stuff but there you go, guys. Something simple that you can do. Information to share.
Y'all share it with someone else. Y'all be good.